Hello everyone. In the previous video, we looked at setting up API management, and in this video, we'll delve into the integration flows. Uh, so some of the basic concepts of integration flow that you need to be aware of, uh, there is this uh, concept called the message. Uh, this message is the fundamental entity in integration flow, and it contains the data uh, that is uh, flows through the integration workflow. Uh, so the message, the structure of the message looks something like this. Uh, it has headers, uh, which is nothing but uh, key value pairs, and the the attachments is optional and then you have the body of the message now this is this message uh, flows through the integration flow and you can modify the header the body as the message flows through the integration flow uh, now the message as it flows through the integration flow uh, it is put inside of a container and this container is called the exchange or this box is called the exchange now you can see that the message is inside of this uh, exchange uh, container now the exchange itself has a few properties uh, the exchange ID uniquely identifies the exchange. Uh, the MEP, uh, this stands for message exchange pattern, and this can either be in only or in out. Uh, in out signifies a request reply, uh, so it's synchronous in nature, uh, whereas uh, in only uh, signifies asynchronous. Uh, now, the properties section that you see right here is very similar to the header section. Uh, the only thing the properties does not do is it does not leave the iFlow. Uh, so, any any temporary values that you want to assign uh, during the flow, the during the exchange flow, uh, you can put those values in the properties, and then you can retrieve them. Uh, you can set them anytime during the I flow, uh, but this does not leave the uh, integration flow. Uh, the in message, of course, we've already seen this. Uh, this has the headers, the attachments, and the body. The attachments of optional. Uh, now, if it is an in out message, uh, which means the message uh, leaves the iFlow and goes back to the center, uh, then you have the out message, uh, which has the same structure as the in message. Uh, you don't have the out message in the case of an in only because uh, the message is completely ignored. Nothing is sent back to the center. Uh, so it looks something like this. Uh, so the application makes a call uh, to the iFlow, and then the whatever the consumer sends, the sender sends, uh, that is part of the message, uh, the header and the body. And uh, the processors can uh, can modify the message any way they want, and it goes through uh, all the processors in the workflow, and at the end, uh, it checks whether the message exchange pattern is in only or in out. If it is in out, uh, the message is sent back to the sender. Uh, if it is in only, uh, then it is thrown away. Uh, so that is uh, the key concept that you should be aware of when you're working with iFlows. Now, the iFlow itself can be triggered in a couple of ways. Uh, so you can have a sender adapter. So you can have zero or one sender adapter. Uh, so an example of a sender adapter can be an HTTP request or a SOAP request. So the SOAP request or the HTTP request, uh, it triggers the iFlow by doing the start event. And here is where the iFlow starts. And then you can have any number of uh, processing steps, and then it goes back to the end. And again, at the end, if it is an in-out message, then the uh, uh, then the uh, out message is sent back to the sender. Otherwise, it is completely ignored. Now you can also start it without an adapter in, with the with the use of a timer. Uh, so then uh, yes, and then it uh, starts right away depending on the timer frequency. Uh, this is the architecture of how the iFlow itself works. Uh, so when you're working with the designing the iFlow, uh, then you're using the browser and you're using a multi-tenant application from SAP. So uh, at this moment, uh, you're uh, simply using the multi-tenant application provided by SAP. And once you're uh, once you're done designing your iFlow, then you can deploy it. And at this time, a Java application uh, is deployed to your customer tenant sub account. And this this is the application that your adapter or your timer, this is the iFlow that gets executed. Uh, so let's, ha let's say we have an HTTP adapter that is uh, triggering this iFlow. So the sender system uh, makes a call. The call goes through the load balancer, comes to the Java application that is now deployed. Uh, it triggers the iFlow, and then the iFlow can do its processing steps. And if it has uh, uh, like a receiver adapter, then it can make a call to a receiver system, and then uh, it goes to the end and based on whether it's in, out, or in only, the message is sent back to the sender system. 
Uh, as the message goes through the uh, flow, the uh, iFlow processing steps, uh, you can um, manipulate the message in any number of ways. Uh, so initially, uh, the message is set by the incoming message. Uh, so in the case of an HTTP adapter or a SOAP adapter, uh, that can provide the incoming payload. And then later on, you can use any of these components uh, to change the data uh, in the iFlow. And uh, you can also use this uh, simple expression language to retrieve the data. So if you want to retrieve what is there in the body, you can retrieve it using this uh, simple expression like this. Uh, the placeholder is the dollar and two curly braces, and then you can retrieve uh, either uh, information in the header or the property or the uh, body itself. So let's have a quick uh, demo of uh, what I mean by this. Uh, so let me go to my integration flow. And at this moment, I have an, uh, this is a in-out uh, uh, in out iFlow. So you can see uh, that I have an HTTPS adapter uh, that triggers this iFlow. So I make an HTTPS call. And then I mentioned that we can change the data any way we want uh, using uh, these uh, tools that we have. Uh, in this case, with the content modifier, I'm changing the header. So if I look in the header, I'm creating a new header called my header, and I'm adding a value called header value. And then I'm also changing the property. I'm adding a new property right here. And then in my message body, uh, what I'm doing is uh, you can see that I'm also getting the in body using the simple expression language. And then I'm actually modifying the message itself. And because this is in out, uh, once it reaches the end, uh, this entire message is sent back to the sender. So let's have a look at how this uh, thing looks like. Uh, so if I go to my postman, and I'm making a call to this endpoint to trigger this iFlow. And this is my in body that I'm sending right here. Uh, and you, as you can see, uh, what we're going to do is put that in body into this incoming message, and then we are going to add some more data to it. Uh, so if, when I run it, uh, you can see that it's uh, going to give me uh, some structure like this, which has the incoming message, the header value, the property, and so on. Now, if I go back here, uh, you can also see that I also added some values to the property. Uh, now, the property does not leave the iFlow, uh, but the header value will leave the iFlow and go back to the sender. So if I go into this headers right here, uh, you will see that I have a header uh, that is, says my header and then has the value header value that I sent. Uh, but the property value, you don't see it here because it doesn't uh, leave the iFlow. Now let's look at another example where uh, the where it's an in-only message. Uh, so same setup, same iFlow setup. Uh, in this case, I'm using a SOAP adapter. A SOAP adapter can function both as a uh, both as the uh, in-out message or an in-message. So it can be both synchronous and asynchronous. Uh, so if I go into my connections, uh, I have marked this as uh, an in-only message. Uh, so if I go into my connection, so I have set it as a one way, which is in-only. So this is an in-only message. Uh, so the incoming message is going to populate the header, the property, and so on. Uh, but in my content modifier, I'm going to change it again. So same thing, I have a, a header that I've added. I have added an exchange property, and I've also added a message body as well. Same thing uh, that we saw last time. But in this case, uh, when I run this in only message right here, so when I execute this, so this is the body that I'm sending right here. And if I execute this, uh, because this is asynchronous, I immediately get 202 accepted. And um, there is nothing else that comes back. None of the headers, none, uh, they, none of them come back to the sender uh, because it is uh, completely ignored when it reaches the endpoint. Uh, but uh, the uh, and then the you, all you get is the 202 accepted, and then the processing happens uh, asynchronously. Okay, so these are the key concepts you need to know about the iFlow. In the next video, we will look at uh, setting up uh, the uh, exercise that we talked about. Thank you.